So something I know that a lot of students struggle with is these factor of change problems, the ones where it says we did something one way, and then how does it change if we do it a different way? So I've got three problems here that will hopefully help you guys uh, see how to do that with energy problems. And, um, and yeah, let's just do it. So first one, we have a block sliding down a frictionless ramp of height h. It then reaches a speed v. To reach speed 2v, the block would need to start at, a, uh, at what height? So height is clearly the thing that we're looking at. Uh, we're trying to find uh, what the final height is uh, and by what factor of change it should change. Uh, it'll be affected. The, what, the thing that we know is that we're going from V to 2V. So when we're setting this up, uh, we clearly have something that is uh, starting at the top of a hill and sliding downwards, which means if we look at this from an energy perspective, it's an ugly line, look at this from an energy perspective, it's starting with gravitational potential energy, and it's ending with kinetic energy. So I can set this up. I have mg watt, uh, well, let's call that mgh, actually, equals 1 half mv squared. All right, so this is, this is how you always start your friction problems, or your factor change problems, I'm sorry. Uh, you look at the problem, you look at what's changing, you set it up, and then mathematically, we need to get the thing that we care about, the height, by itself. So the m's are going to cancel, like happens in so many of our problems. Uh, and then we get gh equals 1 half uh, v squared. I can also divide both sides by uh, g. And I get h is equal to uh, 1 half times v squared over h. Now with that done, I'm now going to plug in the factors of change. The, the change in h is going to be based off of how the half changes, how the v changes, and how the h changes. The half can't change. That's a constant in our problem. Uh, no matter what numbers we changed, we would always have that factor of one half in there. So I'm going to plug in a one for there. The V though, the V is going from V to 2V. So the factor of change there is a factor of two. But V is squared, so I have to keep doing that mathematical operation to it. So it's two squared over, uh, oh, this shouldn't be H, this should be G, I'm sorry. I divided both sides by g, not by h. Uh, so the, the, the g, the acceleration due to gravity, should stay the same. We're still on the same planet. We have no reason to think it would be different. Um, so if I evaluate this, we get 1, 1. All right, those, I mean, technically they cancel, but also they're 1s. Multiplying by and dividing by 1s just doesn't matter, so we'll ignore them. And we 2 squared is 4, and that gives us our factor of change. So if this stuff changed by a factor of four, then this also has to change by a factor of four. And that gives us our answer. If we want it to be going twice as fast, we need to start it from four times higher up. And that makes sense because we can see that H and V have an exponential relationship. So if I want to change this by double, I have to change that one by four times. Okay, next one. We have a, a block that is being SH'd up a frictionless incline. Uh, so it's going up our incline like that, boom. Uh, it's going so fast now. Uh, and it reaches the total height of h. And we want to know how changing this angle would affect it. So let's set up the equation again. This time we're going from uh, energy bar charts of kinetic energy turning into gravitational potential. So that is a 1 half mv squared equals mgh. Okay. I'm supposed to figure out how high it would go based on this incline. Notice though, theta's not in there at all. We don't really care. It's going to get to the exact same height. If I don't change anything else around here, these are the only variables that could change it. Even mass won't change it. V is the only thing that could change it. And V is not changing, just the incline's changing. So what's going to happen is, if it was going on a 40 degree incline and it got up to here, on the 20 degree incline, it's going to go further over, but it's going to get to the exact same height. So my factor of change here is zero. It still gets to H because there was no theta to solve for. This would actually be different. This is a much longer problem if we try and do it with uh, kinematics and forces. But from the energy perspective, it was super easy. All right, next problem. A spring-loaded uh, launcher SHs another ball 12 meters into the air. So let's draw this real quick. We have it being SHed into the air. Um, so it's going to be starting 
with a spring potential energy. And then at the very end, if we're trying to talk about how high it goes, it's ending with gravitational potential. It does have kinetic energy in some intermediate steps. But we don't care about that because we're looking at the highest it goes. And at its highest moment, it gets to that, that spot right when it's not moving because it's like slowing down, slowing down, slowing down. Highest moment stopped and then starts moving back downwards. But then it has kinetic energy again. But at the highest moment, it's not moving. It only has gravitational. So setting this up, I have one half kx squared. That's my formula for springs equals one half mv squared. All right, this time mass doesn't cancel. I don't have mass on both sides, so I can't just throw that out right away. What we are trying to do is we're trying to figure out how the height changes. So I'm going to try, oops, I did the wrong formula. All right. um, shoot, I'm not going to read the board. Ugh, it sounds gross. I'm just going to have to rewrite it, and you guys will all know how stupid I am. Uh, that should be mgy, not 1 half mv squared. We're talking about gravitational potential, not kinetic. But still, mass doesn't cancel. I was right about that. Yay. All right, we want to figure out how y changes. So let's solve this for y. Um, we can get it to the form of y equals kx squared over 2 times mg. I divided both sides by m and g. They ended up on the bottom. I pulled the 2 down just to make it look a little bit better. Now let's uh, put in our factors of change. All right, nothing is changing about our, um, our spring constant. So our factor of change is 1. Our compression, though, we're compressing it by half as much, so the factor of change is 1 half. But we have to square it because it says square it in the equation. The 2 doesn't change. That's a constant. The mass, it's still the same ball, so it's the same mass, and the acceleration due to gravity is not changing either. So this ends up being, when we evaluate it, one fourth, because one half squared is a fourth, which means that the change in height of y is a change of one fourth. So that's how you do those problems. We'll be practicing some more factors, factor change problems uh, next week. Um, so thank you guys for watching. I hope this helped you guys learn a little bit more about how to use energy equations and bar charts and, and all those things, and also how to use this factor of change method to answer some of these common type questions.